Hey! Did you get it? Did I get it? Hey! Hey, what's up, Passion students? This is Grant, and I'm so excited to be kicking off another year of family groups. And I really believe that God is going to do something amazing in and through your family group this year. You've heard us say this a lot at Passion Students, but we believe that growth happens in groups. We believe that we can go further, faster if we go together than we ever could if we were by ourselves. And so I want to say great job of making it to Family Group. I'm proud of you for getting connected in, and I believe you're going to see extraordinary growth in your life, and I believe God's going to do something in and through your Family Group this year that's going to be really, really special. One of the things I want all of us to know is this that we are part of a family and we say that all the time we're family you're part of our passion students family we're all part of a big family but there's a big idea and the big idea is this that our family is on mission together it's not just your family group leaders who are on mission it's not just the people who work here that are on mission you are on mission with us because we are all part of the same family. It's one of the most amazing things about the high school ministry at Passion Students that there's well over a hundred high schools represented in our family groups as you're sitting around at group week this week. Isn't that crazy? There's 20 high school family groups that will gather all across Atlanta for this first group week and in those 20 groups there's hundreds of high schools represented. And in those high schools there's over a hundred thousand high school students represented. And I believe this, and I want you to see it this way, that God has a purpose and a plan for you, but it doesn't just end with you. It begins with you, and then it moves through you into other people. And I want you to join the mission this year. I want you to join the idea that, man, there's 100,000 high school students in Atlanta, and I've been placed at a high school, then I believe my purpose is to go into that high school on purpose for the fame and the renown of Jesus Christ. That's a different way of thinking. You know, what, what normal thinking says is, I've got my group of five guys and I'm good. I've got my family group of 11th grade girls and we've been around each other for four or five years now since we were in middle school and we're good. But here's the idea today. The idea is that there's a hundred plus thousand high school students who don't have that right now. And if we want them to have it, then God's going to use us to do it. What an incredible privilege. So I wanted us to anchor around this one passage in scripture to kick off this year. It's found in the book of Hebrews chapter 10. This is what it says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. A lot of you have heard that scripture before, but I want to break it down into a couple different sections and I want it to be the anchor, the banner over what we're trying to do this year through family groups at Passion City Church. Number one we see in this text is that we should be encouraging each other. You know, it's not very uh, common in 2018 to find someone who is going to encourage you. And so we want to be a place where every student can come and be encouraged. It's not just the family group leader's job to encourage the people in the family group. It's all of our job as people who are following Jesus to encourage the people who are around us. This is what this text is saying. He's saying, oh, if we're going to move forward, if the church is going to move forward, then we've got to be people who are committed to being encouragers. And I want that to be true of you. And I want that to be true of me. What we see, the second big idea is this. He says that we'll stir one another towards love and good works. You know, have you ever had a person in your life, maybe they're in your family group right now, maybe it's a brother or a sister or a friend from school or somebody on your team, and that person has pushed you into becoming a better person, and you're not always sure, you know, like sometimes you just want them to leave you alone because, you know, oh, if I get around them, they're going to call me out for that thing, and then I'm going to have to change that thing. And you have that one or two people, maybe you have a name in your mind of that person. Well, all of us are called to be those people for each other. We all should accomplish more because we're around each other than we ever could if we didn't have each other. 
And that's what the scripture is saying in Hebrews. It's saying that when we gather together, that we should be spurred on. We, we should take new ground. We should have new vision. We should want to do better. We should want to do more because we have each other in each other's corners. And I want that to be true of your family group this year. So I want you to look in your group this week when you're at group week and look in the eyes of the guys or the eyes of the girls who are in your group. And I want you guys to make a commitment that this, your family group isn't going to be all about you this year. That, that you're not just coming to family group only to get something for yourself. But you're going and you're saying, man, we're going to be in it together this year for the long haul. And I'm making a commitment to spur you on towards love and good deeds. I'm going to have your back this year and I'm going to keep you on track towards all that God has called you to be. And then the third big idea we see is this. It says not giving up meeting together. You see, meeting together is important. It's really, really important. Because if you read the scripture, what you'll see is since the beginning of the church, what was most valuable was when the believers would get together and they would fill each other's tanks up. They would pour fuel on the fire. And that, that's so critical for us. But if you're not careful, one of a few things will happen. E either you'll get sidetracked and you'll just be like, man, I started the year off in family groups, but now it's kind of November or it's February and I'm not really sure. I go sometimes, I don't go sometimes. Or, 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 or maybe you'll enter into a relationship and that, that person isn't about the same things you're about and all of a sudden you just find yourself sidetracked or, or maybe you just get busy. Maybe it's just school or things that happen. But here's what I want to say to you today is you have to make this group a priority if you want to get the maximum impact out of this group that is possible for you this year. If you want to grow to your fullest potential, then you have to make a commitment right now and say, I want to reach my fullest potential, so I'm going to make this a priority. Because when I read this, what I understand is that my growth is propelled by me being in a group like this. That's the way that it's always worked. Even in Proverbs, it actually says this. It says it in a little bit stronger language. It says, one who isolates himself pursues selfish desires and he rebels against all sound judgment. And I think you know that to be true. I know that to be true. I know that when I was sitting where you are and I was a high school student, the moments I wish I could take back are the moments where I didn't have anybody around me to help keep me on the rails. The, the, when I just let myself get isolated and I just kind of bailed on what I knew was important and I just did my own thing. In those seasons, that's where I made the decisions that I wish I would have never made. I wish I would have had the voice in my life. I wish I would have had another student or a leader who would have had my back and go, no man, we're not doing that. We're not going that way because we've got a mission. We've got 100,000 plus high school students who need to know about Jesus. And so we're gonna move in this direction and I'm not gonna let you go off the rails. We are better when we are together. So growth is going to happen in your group this year. It's going to happen in you, but it's also going to happen through you. My hope and my prayer is that our family groups all throughout the year, they're having to break off and start new groups because we're seeing the gospel explode and all these high school students from around Atlanta coming together to worship Jesus. God's going to use us to do it. I really and truthfully believe that he is. I love you. We love you. We're so excited for a start to a new year. I want you to talk about some of this stuff in your group. Maybe set some goals for your group. Anchor yourselves to the Word of God. Commit to praying for each other. And let's see what God has in store. We love you. We'll see you soon.